So welcome everyone. I hope you can hear me. Um, I've been waiting for a few minutes so that people can actually join this uh, opening session for FTG. Um, it's really weird to actually do this from, uh, from Zoom, but uh, it, it's really exciting to be here and actually welcome you all in Malta, on Malta, and um, under these circumstances. So um, I see some familiar faces, I see some familiar names, and it's really, it's really great to have you around. And um, myself and Adonis today will be basically taking you, hello from Canada, okay, hello from Malta. So basically we're taking you through the basic, uh, some basic instructions on how, how the conference will run, some statistics, and some, a bit of history. So maybe I don't know if we go to the next slide. So basically, um, the conference of, uh, on foundations of digital games is, uh, as we call it, the umbrella conference on game research. It's been there for uh, the last 15 years. It's quite old business by now. Uh, it started for its first three years. It started as uh, on a cruise ship, as um, uh, sponsored by Microsoft. It was a Microsoft school for game development. And then it has mostly been in the US, uh, North America, and Europe, as you can see from the pictures here, has been around the world, but mostly in these two areas, to these continents, um, has been to uh, California many times, has been to Malmo, Sweden in 18, uh, Paris, uh, Crete, and uh, has also been uh, on a cruise ship quite a few times. This is, this is quite an exciting, uh, conference, especially because of the fact that it has been such, has been switching between being on a cruise ship, being on land, and being on various places. So the conference has been growing actually over the last 15 years, and uh, today we're here to present you the 15th, thank you Adonis, the 15th version of it, uh, it's on Malta, the focus of the conference is on technology used to develop digital games, and, uh, and the study of, of games and their design, the goal is for academics primarily and people, entrepreneurs and people working in the game industry to present their work to a diverse audience, share new ideas and find collaboration with different backgrounds. As I said earlier, this is the umbrella conference as we want to call it uh, within game research. Uh, th this is the conference where it combines advanced technology, game design, analysis, the humanities and so on. Uh, throughout these years, the conference has been supported and operated by the Society for the Advancement of, of Science of Digital Games. It's like uh, the society behind this, uh, this conference series. Adonis. Next. Right. So, what we have planned for you, because uh, both of us, the two of us with Adonis, have been, let's say, in the organizing committee of this conference quite a few years, the two of us have been uh, in the organizing committee of uh, FTG in 2013 and uh, because it's such a thriving community and um, live community of, of researchers, we actually wanted to repeat this and bring the conference to Malta and we actually succeeded on, on our bid and we had planned several of these cool things uh, that you see here on this, on this slide, uh, such as, you know, open bars, Valletta walking tour, which is the capital of, well, is the capital of Malta, uh, we're planning, a, we were planning a, a cruise um, and in general, Mata is such a great place actually and it's such a pity that you, you are not around, unfortunately. And, and for reference, uh, just to jump in, the uh, image here with the, with the sea is our view from the conference hotel and the conference venue, so unfortunately we have Zoom instead. <laughs> well, c'est la vie, um, instead we have to Hello from Boston, hello from Malta, welcome. Um, just getting uh, responding to chat. So the harsh reality is that, uh, it's not, yeah, it's harsh, but at the same time, the challenges bring new opportunities. This is the way I would like to see it. So all these COVID challenges brought us challenges, but also opportunities to actually host the first virtual FTG ever. So, so far it runs, as far as I'm concerned, I'm a bit biased, but it runs smoothly, right? The, the, the workshops run quite smoothly. We had to take some hard decisions back in the days, 
uh, in uh, collaboration with Jim, Michael Young and so on, just had to take decisions based on the fact that there were several travel restrictions, quite a lot of uncertainty as nowadays, uh, the safety of us and you as participants. So throughout the conference, we will still call it Malta. We have this very nice background that David made. Uh, we can all use to just feel like, you know, a common place, uh, a bit Maltese. And, uh, and at the same time, I have to say, it gives us opportunities, this, this virtual format gives us opportunities and uh, benefits such as being accessible to more people, more diverse people, there is asynchronous communication. We're always live in several ways. At Don's, we'll be talking about more about uh, all these means of communication that we, we set up for you so that we make it as accessible and as convenient as possible. Um, so we still call it Malta. It's not, it's not our living, living room. Hopefully, we will feel less, you know, more, more of, a, of a physical conference than it actually is. Now, there have been so many people uh, part of this conference and here you see just a few of these faces, the general program chairs, proceeding chairs, eight track chairs, we had eight tracks, uh, quite, quite a rich program. Uh, we have six more chairs, which I don't know what you're referring to here, Adonis, uh, you know, but there, there are many chairs, obviously. Um, we had quite a few workshops and several organizers involved in that and of course the 10 uh, SA SDG board members that help us throughout uh, this organization. And uh, last but not least, uh, we had 203, uh, 230 uh, program committee members who actually reviewed your and our papers. So thank you all, like an actual clap, because you know, I had the emoji clap. Um, so thank you all, really, I mean, we, we couldn't have done this without you. Um, now, obviously, as I said, we organize this in collaboration with uh, SASDG and traditionally FTG is associated with ACM. Uh, this is great. This year, ACM gave us some challenges because of uh, several formatting issues that we had. Adonis, thankfully, uh, has been uh, given a tremendous effort so that we nowadays all have our papers published and there are ACM uh, uh, in ACM proceedings, but but it has been quite quite some effort. So thank you, Adonis, for all this hard work. Actually, next slide as well. Yes, and thank you to all for your patience because of all these um, changes that happened this year. And we also would like to thank uh, the sponsor of FTG. Traditionally, FTG is sponsored by Microsoft, which is great. This year we had Singa sponsoring uh, the event. We have uh, Microsoft-based keynotes and, and Zynga activities uh, throughout the, the, the program. You will see more about that uh, as the days go by. And uh, Antonis, next. And then, I'll, yeah, the stage is yours, Antonis. Thanks. Thank you, Jorgos. So um, I'm just going to go through a little bit about uh, the content, what to expect if uh, you haven't been following the schedule closely. I guess most of you have, since you're here. But uh, we have... Um, this year, 168 research papers submitted. Um, this includes 25 late-breaking papers, which uh, was a great addition because um, we managed to secure that the conference would be virtual and we wanted to invite even more people uh, based on the affordances of a virtual conference and the low price point. Um, 51 of these papers were accepted as full papers, and that's a 36% acceptance rate. And we also have 44 that were accepted as short papers. They're clearly delineated in the um, schedule and uh, they have slightly shorter presentations, but they are, we're very happy to have all these papers. That means that FTG 20 has 95 presentations, which is really exciting and a challenge to um, put into the schedule. Uh, for reference, FTG 19 had 124 research papers submitted and 46 accepted. So we're very glad that um, both um, you know, just one more year and the virtual uh, aspect of the conference has allowed it to grow. And we're seeing uh, a lot more um, registered people this year as well. So I don't know how many of them will be as synchronously at the same time, but we're very glad that uh, more people are aware of FTG and can actually attend it, even if it is virtual. Um, as Jorgos mentioned, we have eight tracks. Um, you probably know them by now. Um, there's a fair dis distribution of uh, submissions. Um, there are some small tracks, traditionally small, like the game technology and game education tracks, and some surprising um, tracks that would have gained a lot of 
for action, sorry for the pun, um, such as Games Beyond Entertainment, which had uh, 20 papers in this year's FTG. Um, we also have five workshops. Um, the procedural conjuration, which took place yesterday, um, enters its second decade. It's the 11th um, workshop uh, with this name. We also have user experience of AI in games, forgetting and remembering digital games for digital literacy and computational thinking, and tabletop games. Some new, some old, but all of them were quite well uh, received and quite well run. So we're very glad to have them in the previous two days, uh, Monday and Friday. We also had uh, five doctor consortium papers um, at the doctor consortium, which also took place yesterday. And on Tuesday, sorry, on, on Wednesday and on Friday, we have two panels, one on games as story generators and one on designing games for remote play. Um, on Thursday, we will have the demonstrations um, session uh, where, where we will see six demonstrations and also the competition of FTG 20, which is the generative design in Minecraft competition. Um, I'm gonna go through this a bit later, but the demonstrations are already available to see um, and interact with the creators on the Discord channel. We are also very happy to have five keynotes. Um, some we secured before the conference moved from Malta to, uh, to online, so we're sorry that we couldn't host you here, but we have Marie Faustin today, Tom Betts and Sahara Sadi tomorrow, Luke Dickin on Thursday and Deirdre Kornstrom on um, Friday. So we're very happy to have them um, present their work here. We also have, have a little surprise that uh, was, um, may have been um, you know, last minute addition, but we're really excited to have FTG TV, which is uh, some sort of a fun activity to watch um, when you're uh, taking the edge off after a long conference. Um, it's the, a nightly talk show. It starts um, at 10 CEST, um, 9 o'clock British time, and you have to figure out where it is at your location um, every day after the conference. Tommy Thompson will be hosting, uh, as well as different co-hosts and guests and correspondents. So we're crossing our fingers that everything will work out fine, um, just like we are with this conference. I have some, um, a funny clip for you, um, just as a teaser and there will be more fun things probably. Ah, is it playing or not? I'm not sure it's showing the sound. You can't hear it. You can't hear it? It plays, but you can't hear it. Oh. All right, you can watch it on YouTube. I'm not gonna spend more time here. <laughs> um, so in terms of the logistics, um, we, as you can guess, we are here, so everybody knows that we're um, taking place on Zoom. There's going to be two parallel meetings all day. Uh, room one, um, very uh, inspired uh, name, will be where the keynotes will be happening, the, uh, most of the things will be happening. We also will have a parallel room, room two, which will be open in a few minutes. Um, and that is for well, the other sessions. You can always swap between meetings as you go. So that's why we wanted to have two completely different meetings rather than have breakout rooms, et cetera. Um, every participant will be muted until the Q&A um, with the mute all function. We assume that we don't need to mute, force mute you, so please just keep your microphones muted while you're um, paying attention. Um, questions um, are um, offered by raising your hand. It's easier for the track chair to keep track. Um, and when you are called on, you can unmute and, and uh, ask your question. Um, if you're shy, you can also use the uh, group chat to ask a question. But uh, we would like to keep conversations on the Discord. So try to avoid having long conversations, mostly for the sake of the speaker, because they see the chat and they might get confused while they're, uh, while they're talking. Um, one more thing on, in terms of etiquette. If you're paying attention and you are not in the middle of something else, it's always nice to have someone you know, nodding along to your presentation. So if you're um, paying attention, it's nice to open the webcam. If we see the, uh, any internet issues, we might change this rule, but it's always nice to have some faces when you're, uh, when you're presenting. Um, so the FTG schedule is online. It's on the FTG website, ftg2020.org. Um, there's gonna be three hours of papers. Um, we try to keep it short, which means the presentations are short. I think that's a good decision. I hope you agree or don't disagree too hard. Um, we will also have one keynote at least every day and also extra content. 
Um, we're going to have panels, um, competitions, etc. Um, don't forget the schedule is on your local time zone. I assume the, the ones here have figured this out, but I just want to make it clear to everybody as well. And every paper can also be read at the website proceedings. Um, all of this information has been given to you in one of the many numerous and not so short emails that you have received by us in the past uh, week or so. Um, we also have six papers that are nominated for the Best Paper Award. Um, I'm going to very quickly talk about the rationale for this. We wanted to have a diverse um, set of papers, so we chose one per track, the best one, uh, according to the reviewers, per track and the track chair per track. Uh, and we also um, grouped together the smaller tracks together um, to have six papers instead of eight. Um, you can already see the best paper nominations on the schedule and on the website. That same link on the website will become um, clickable, so you can choose your, uh, your uh, nomination through a personalized token that you will receive late on Wednesday, right after the conference. So you will be sent a code, it will be a one-use code, that will be when all the presentations have finished and you're able to vote. We will count the votes on uh, Friday, right before the, um, the finishing, uh, the outro, basically, and we will announce the winner. Um, I also want to point out that we never mentioned this in writing to everybody, but we have 22 exceptional papers. These are labeled clearly in the schedule, and these are papers that we had uh, highly ranked by the reviewers, and we wanted to give an extra um, bravo to these, even though they're not in the best uh, nominations. All right, so many of you have already chatted on Discord. Discord will be running in parallel to the FTG. Um, you don't have to join it, but a lot of the announcements are going to be there. Um, you can do a lot of interactions with uh, participants. You can um, see the announcements. You can um, schedule to play together. I'll get to that in a bit. There's also a number of voice chat rooms with some funny names. This is supposed to serve mostly as a tavern. So you pick a table, you sit there, you bring your friends and you have a chat. People can drop by at any time, of course, and they, it can be organic, um, just like in a, in a um, sit down at, at, a, at a banquet or something like that. Um, if you want to have a private conversation, you're very welcome to set up your own Zoom calls, of course. Um, we don't, this, this is always tricky when you're doing online chatting. So we don't want anonymous chatters. We want you to have your name. All of you have already. Um, we're uh, chasing people if they have forgotten or have uh, their gaming nickname instead. Uh, try to be civil and report bad behavior. I'll get back to that in a little bit. Um, the social event um, is still TBA in the schedule. That's because it's um, something that will be announced by, by you. So we want to do it bottom up. We have a few activities planned already. There's going to be a LARP uh, hosted by Christoph Saga. Um, and some of you have already set up some other um, plays either on today or tonight uh, or on the other days. The idea of the Play Together channel is for you to find a group, figure out your own online platform. You might want to do a voice chat um, on, the, on the voice chat of the, of the Discord or make your own um, Discord server or make your own Zoom call, whatever. Um, and um, yeah, it's going to be a bit more ground up this time um, because we couldn't find a good way um, to make it work for everybody. No, no 200 LARP, uh, 200 people LARP was possible. Um, okay, one last thing, um, just because we're a virtual conference doesn't mean that you, uh, that you cannot be hurtful online as well. Actually, to me, that's more risky. Um, so we commit to provide a harassment-free, accessible and pleasant conference. We want everybody to feel welcome, included, and safe. Try to make sure that everybody feels like this. Um, it is our commitment. If you have any, anything to report, please do so. Um, there's emails in the uh, code of conduct that is now on the website, less hidden than before. Renata and, Tom, and myself, well, and uh, David, and uh, we will try our best to solve it. We can't solve every issue, but we'll try our best, okay? So, that's pretty much it, actually. Um, we will now pause, press pause, and we will resume by opening room two, and we will continue here in room one for um, 
for the room one session. 